If you apply a force F on a mass that is resting on a smooth surface, Newton's second law states that F is equal to Ma. And by knowing the force and the mass, if we want to solve for the acceleration A, then it should be equal to F over M. And since M is a scalar quantity and F is a vector quantity, the acceleration will take the direction of the force. And this is a natural conclusion of Newton's second law. If you apply a force on a mass, the mass will accelerate in the same direction of the force. So if you apply a 1 Newton force on a 1 kilogram mass, it will accelerate with 1 meters per second square, which leads to the definition of Newton in the SI unit. 1 Newton is equal to 1 kilogram times meter per second square. But let's say that the mass M has many forces acting on it in different directions. How do we know in this case the direction of the acceleration? Well, in this case, we have to use the standard definition of Newton's second law, which states that the summation of forces acting upon mass M is equal to M times A. And since we don't know the direction of the acceleration in this case, we assume its direction and we use the same assumption as the positive direction for our equation of motion. And this is by far one of the most important concepts in dynamics. If you want to do well in dynamics, keep this assumption as a standard practice when you solve problems. Always assume the direction of the acceleration and use your assumption as the positive of the equation of motion. Okay, let's apply this here. You have a mass acted upon by two forces. What is the acceleration of this mass? First, assume the direction of the acceleration. And then use this direction of acceleration as your positive assumption for the Newton's second law or the equation of motion. So F1 will be positive, F2 will be negative, M is given, we can find A to be plus 2 meters per second square, which means 2 meters per second square in the same assumed direction of the acceleration. How about assuming the acceleration in the other direction? What will happen? Well, we just use the same rules. We assume the direction of the acceleration. We use our assumption as the positive of the equation of motion. And then now, Fa becomes negative. F2 in the same direction of acceleration becomes positive, equals Ma, and A now becomes minus 2 meters per second square. And since we have minus, so it is against the positive direction of the motion, which means that it points to the right. And this is exactly the same that we found by using the first approach. So you can see here, it doesn't matter where you assume your acceleration direction as long as you obey the standard rule. Make an assumption on the direction of the acceleration and use your assumption as the positive of your equation of motion.